Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking about bouncing back. Now, hopefully, you have already bounced back, and this may not pertain to you, but there may still be some awesome information. So if you've bounced back or you haven't quite yet, please stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. Uh, If it's your first time checking us out, go watch. Tons of episodes. Do it. If it's not your first time, you've watched a bunch of episodes, and more importantly, you've given me the virtual high five of awesomeness by ordering supplies through me, well, then thank you. I really do appreciate it, you guys. The people who are loyally always buy or always put stuff in their cart, and then they always text me and say, yo, everything's in my cart. Here's the code. You guys don't have to, and you do, and that's amazing, and I really appreciate that. And if you want to order through me, it costs you nothing extra, no extra hassle or anything. I get to put the order in. I get credit for it. We both win, and it's like that virtual high five of awesomeness. My number is 862-312-2026. Save that number, 862-312-2026. Let me know. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. Use that also. Um... And just be awesome. Let me know what kind of brand name things that you want uh, me to buy with the money that I make on your sale. That's the new coolest thing, and I love it. So a couple of quick shout-outs. I want to say what's up to Brandon Deal, John Young, Caleb Robinson, Mike Nichols, the best beard in the industry, and, of course, Josh from Bethany Associates, who he's been like an OG awesome dude, and I don't know that I've ever given him a shout-out, so I'm sorry. But what's up? What's up, Josh? What's up, man? Uh, but be one of the awesome guys too. If you want to put your order in, you got the number, but today we are talking about bouncing back. Now I'm really, really hoping that you're one of those people that as we talk about this, you saw the title, you saw everything come up and you went, uh, eh, I don't really need to know about bouncing back. We're busy. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I mean, there's States out there like Utah who never really shut down. On the opposite side, there's states out there like uh, Illinois and Boston that are having just a really, 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 really tough time. I've talked to some people who are just devastated, and that sucks. And that's kind of what I want to make this episode back for is bouncing back. Now, as we come back online, which it will happen, and those guys out there who are still in it, stay with it, you know, stay strong if you can. I mean, It sounds really bad and easy for somebody else to say, but it does come back, and it comes back like crazy. The people who have uh, come back online have come back with a vengeance, and they're having like the best year ever. Um, You know, I've talked to more people this year that have said uh, this is the best they've ever done. I mean, dozens and dozens of people. So that's great. There's still a way to bounce back from all this. Now, if you're just in the thick of it and you're already on it, this some of this may not be, you know, as helpful as the people who are prepping for it, but either way, I kind of wanted to talk about it. Now, first off, I'm talking to some people who are devastated, and it it really, I'm a nobody. I'm just some guy with a microphone. So, me telling you to stay with it, to stay strong, to get through this doesn't mean anything. You have to know it in yourself. You have to understand it in yourself. Um, if you can. I know it sucks, and I know you're tired of eating ramen and nothing's coming in. The business will come back. I had somebody say, well, we've already had some businesses closed down. Those were businesses I cleaned. Yes, but those uh, businesses are still there. The actual building is still there. Even if you got stuck in the the looting and they smashed some windows, they're going to be replaced windows. If, you know, XYZ restaurant goes out, The next restaurant will go in. You will be able to get that stuff back. So you got to stay strong. It's super, super hard to do, especially right now. Everything just seems like, yeah, there's just no, there's no way anything's coming back. It does. I promise you. The downside and plus side, and I never, ever, ever, ever wish anybody ill luck. I just don't. That's not me. I don't ever want to see anybody fail. I wish we could get out of this without it. But the truth of the matter is some of your competitors will not go through this. Now, either they just retire, they go, you know what? It's a good time to just not do anything. 
the business is now for sale or they're having the same thing where now all these jobs are dropping them and they're now available for you to get, you will be able to see a growth after all this if you stick with it. So stay stay with it. You know, it's not lasting much longer. There's only a few states left that are still really, really hurting. So stay with it if you can. But when everything comes back online, it's treated almost like spring. Remember, a normal spring happens as you have nothing and all of a sudden the light switch happens and now you have everything. That's kind of how we are. Um, With this whole thing, it may have shown you a few, um, you know, areas that you could improve in. Maybe your financial side wasn't as strong as you thought. You know, this type of thing doesn't happen, but planning for something like this, or at least not being out of work for this long, is something to strive for. You know, so you're going to be a stronger company getting through this. It's just like all those OGs who went through the 2008 collapse. Like, I remember I lost like six car dealerships in one week. And we lost them for years. Like, they just didn't clean windows. And then all of a sudden they call and want all window cleaning done a year. And it was just, it was crazy. If you went through that, you kind of got a stronger business. You kind of took the negatives and said, wow, this sucks right now. But now your company is stronger. 2010 to 12, you were a stronger company because you got through it all. I think that's what's going to happen with this. Uh, and I'm really, it's really easy for me, some dude sitting in front of his computer. You don't even know if I'm wearing pants, man. Uh, but sitting in front of his computer and, um, you know, just babbling to you guys. It's really easy for me to say that, but you have to stay strong on all this. Yeah. Either way, it will come back. It just is a matter of time. A couple of things to think about or remember. And bouncing back, there's a big one. The big thing that I see right now is that people are jumping on the bandwagon. They're going, okay, well, this is all a big panic right now. Now I'm going to sell masks or sell foggers. There's literal window cleaning supply companies um, that are now selling foggers and guys that are going into the certified, you know, um, disinfecting area. Here's the thing. As humanity goes, humanity can easily forget. So what's going to happen is in just a few months, they're not going to be fogging. They're not going to be, I said that word really weird, fogging. They're not going to be fogging. They're not going to be... Uh, disinfecting like they are now. All that is going to go to the wayside. And the longer and longer it goes, more companies get into that, only to find out that it's now a flooded market of people who aren't even doing the work, aren't getting the work done. Anyway, so don't jump on the bandwagon. I know it's very easy to do that, but stick to your core. Stick to your core. You know also that there are going to be some guys who lose their job, or girls, but they lose their job in corporate America or whatever else, and they go, hey, you know what? I used to clean windows in college. I'm jumping on. I'm doing that. Those are the new guys coming into the area. And if you're one of those new guys, welcome to the industry. But if you're not, you got to kind of watch for that. You know people are going to be coming into your market. It's the same thing with anything. You know, you're tailoring kind of what goes on. Don't go and um, jump on to services that is just not your cup of tea. Like if you're producing masks right now or you're trying to or you're trying to secure a million units or something it's not going to be as easy to sell as it was a month ago right it's not going to be as easy as it was two months ago now think a month from now or two months from now nobody's even wearing masks anymore right and there may still be stragglers that kind of do all this so you know with everything that i'm saying if you want to argue that's fine jump on youtube comment down below uh let me know but um, it's it's one of those things. Don't jump on a bandwagon that's running off a cliff. And that's kind of the same concept here. So don't do that. Remember your key things that you do. Remember what makes you the money and focus on those services. We're still a luxury service. So there's still a lot of people who have the luxury money that are going to have us. Now, the people who have really been hit the hardest are the route guys. Because route just shut down. Just shut down. It doesn't matter if they were, you know, uh, it, um, you know, big money tickets or little money tickets. It just didn't matter. It just shut down because the businesses were shut down. 
Those are going back online also. And what has to happen is they have to get their windows done. Even if people, and I get in arguments, people are like, well, what happens when they got no money because they've been shut down for two months? Well, they still get audited. They still get uh, inspected. They still have to open up and not look like a dumpster. Like there's certain costs with businesses and just opening up, they're going to have to use a window cleaning service or do it themselves when they're not doing that a lot of the times, right? So even if you lost something and you think, well, now they're not going to have the money, they're not going to have the liquid money. Remember four commercial properties or storefronts were more essential because in food, anything food related, windows are usually something that is on the health inspection, if they have dirty windows, not only is it a bad, bad, bad... Like go, think about going into a restaurant with just windows you can barely see out of. I'd be like, ugh. If that's what the windows look like, the kitchen's got to be disgusting. I'm not going in there. The place is gross. it got sticky carpet. Right? So think about that. They still have an image. They still have all that. Stick to window cleaning. Stick to your pressure washing. Stick to roof cleaning. Stick to all that. Here's another thing. People that have stimulus money now. And they have it all on the little debit card. So if you're accepting, by the way, some people got checks, some people didn't. But the only way a stimulus works is to spend the money. The only way the stimulus works is to stimulate the economy. And you're part of the economy. You're a small business. So there's going to be a lot of people who are just like, I want to get it done. I want everything done. I got, you know, they got this extra money. And I know every time I talk about it, people get angry at me and they say, um, you know, what about bills? Well, pay bills, obviously. But they still need to spend it in the environment for it to stimulate the economy. Otherwise, it just stimulates that one person. Right? Think about this. I'm getting off track here. But think about this. If I paid you $100, right? That $100 goes to you. And now you're buying dance lessons for your daughter, plus groceries, plus you're buying um, a TV. Or something. That's really not what you can do with $100, but you get the point. You're then spreading it out. And some of that money goes to the dance teacher. Some of the money goes to the grocery store and the people who work at the grocery store. Some of the money goes to, like, when they give it to one person or a small business, it goes to all of those different entities. If you just take that money and put it in the bank, it goes to you. That's where that stimulus kind of happens. So there's a lot of people out there who want to use it. A lot of people I'm seeing are coming out and getting the gift cards now with the money on the stimulus stimulus, stimulus side of things. By the way, last week, if you watched, I couldn't say sales uh, gift certificate. And I got more comments of people telling me I could now buy speech impediment classes to fix my thing with my money from ordering through me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so they're getting gift cards and if you accept credit cards, you could take a gift card as long as it's got a MasterCard, Visa logo, whatever other cards you accept, you could take that debit card. So now people who are getting the stimulus on a debit card can then give it to you. It's a benefit. Now we all know that's how a stimulus works. You don't necessarily need to jump out there and go, well, you got stimulus money, spend it here. Like that's, you don't need to remind somebody that they got the money but you can remind them that they can spend money with you. So don't use that specifically as a sales or advertising kind of um, side of it, but still use it. People have money right now. They have a little bit more disposable income than they usually do. Not everybody's spending it on window cleaning and pressure washing, but you may get that. Don't jump on the bandwagon for that just to try to scoop up those dollars. The big thing is you got to keep tight until you're busy there's some of you are super busy great you know advertise get new equipment get the trucks up and running hire all that stuff but if you're still in an area who you're still just struggling you're still not there remember to stay tight now is not the time to advertise not quite yet we want to get the best roi for our dollar imagine if you could change it by one week and get 10 percent roi compared to three percent roi would you do it yeah because that is a return on investment on our money. So don't go and go too soon with it. If you go too soon and you're not busy, it's just like spring. It's like advertising in January. It just doesn't work. So don't go too soon. Now, remember, we're treating this whole thing kind of like it's spring. So one day you're going to have two calls. The next day you're going to have 20 calls. 
that 20 call thing happens that means that the population is starting to come back online you got nice weather in the forecast plus people are getting comfortable now's the time to advertise you get a couple good days of big time calls advertise everything you can put it all out there and it's going to come back to you that's the big thing is that you need to treat this kind of like another spring i know we're in june But that's how this is all starting to play out. When people are ready, they're ready. But before that, they're not doing anything. The whole reason this like economy changed and you guys all dropped down in business is not because there was a virus. It's not because people were scared of the virus hurting them or not, you know, hurting you or, and yes, there's some old people who were a little bit more, you know, didn't necessarily look at facts more than just the panic but the mo for the most part people saw the uncertainty and if you're not comfortable in business and a transaction like if you go in and you got the shadiest car salesman you've ever had he's like hey uh what can i do to get you in this car you're like uh you don't have a good feeling even if you wanted the car you're out right that's how the economy works is that when somebody's comfortable with where their income is, where they are financially, they know what's coming in the future, that's what happens. Listen to markets. If you're into stocks, you hear the markets. The markets are uncertain. If a market is uncertain, it crashes or tanks or drops or whatever. As soon as a market is back to being certain or confident, it goes back up. And that's where this all has to happen is that if you're in a Boston, if you're in an Illinois, if you're in any of these states that are super hit hard, by the way, If you're on YouTube, comment down below what state you're in and if you're back to full or not. I really, really, really would like to know. But if you're in one of these harder hit, slower areas, they're just not confident yet. They're looking around and seeing all this stuff happening. Same thing with the riots that I don't even want to necessarily bring up in all of this, but now you're piggybacking in some of these areas. Well, people may be uncertain, well, what's going on with civil unrest? It's kind of the same concept. They have to have something to talk about in the news. And if they talk about it in the news, it affects you. If they talk about uh, the war in Afghanistan, it's not bringing it home. If they talk about windows getting smashed in your downtown, it brings it home. Uncertainty is there. So make sure that you understand where your market is. Just like springtime, watch those incomings once they get more popular All of a sudden, it's in everybody's brain, then put it all out. That's kind of where you're looking at. Another thing we can take from this is learning from the collapse. I mean, as horrible as this sounds, if you're one of those companies that got through the 2008 crap show of the the market, you got stronger. Like by 2010, 2012, like your company was stronger back on track. That took a long time because the entire thing collapsed financially, not just panic. People's emotions can change literally day by day, and that's why this is so fast on and so fast off. But learn from your mistakes. If you had no mistakes, high five, you're doing awesome. But if you went through all this and said, hey, you know what? I didn't have the cash reserves I thought. My jobs weren't as secure as I thought. I didn't diversify as much as I thought. Anything. Now it's time to look at that. Now, if you're watching this or listening to this, you're one of the companies who are going to make it. Clear and simple, you're still, you know, your brain is there. You are doing all you can to get stronger and better and learn. There's a lot of guys out there who won't make it. And it's too late for them to learn a lesson. But for you, you can learn a lesson. So learn from it. If you need to save more, save more. If you need to whatever, do it. Now it's time for you to get something from this. If you don't learn from a, a, an issue, like if something happens, it's not a mistake if you learn something from it. It was a lesson, right? If this happens twice and you're not ready again, it's a mistake. The big thing on this is too is nothing about this has ever happened before. So a lot of you can't plan for this specific situation, of course, but you can plan for having issues like this or market instability. If you can plan for something this big, which again, most of us... There's just no way. It was never even in our brains. But if you can plan for something that big, it makes your world easier. It makes your company that much stronger. So learn from it. Learn from it. 
But when you are busy and when that phone starts ringing, you need to do everything you can and put all of the money that you have in marketing, your marketing budget, all into marketing instantly. The problem is, is that the second spring that we're going to have is coming now in June. It is going to be shorter lived than a normal spring. Now, hopefully this brings you all the way through and then all of a sudden people who waited till fall are all on fall. That would be amazing. But you have to kind of accept that this may be short, big, you know, big fire, hot, fast burning thing. So advertise everything you can and here's what you do. Now, I never ever want to go too far out in advertising, but if you can, book up as much as you can and then push it so that you are then out a little ways so that you can push it into almost fall. That's kind of what you want to do if you can go that route. Another thing to think about in the preparations for getting back online is hiring. Now, there are a lot of us who had to lay people off. Now, if again, if, if you are not hiring, you don't have employees, um, that's fine too. I'm not necessarily talking towards you, but a lot of us are now short staff. A lot of the guys who went back online are so busy, they're short staff because some of their staff didn't come back. Some of them are on unemployment still because they are just riding it out and milking the system. There's always going to be that. So hiring now, as much as it sounds crazy, is something you want to do to be prepared. Now, if you're busier than all get up, hiring is going to be your biggest thorn right now. It just is. And I'm sorry about that because hiring sucks. Hiring is one of those things that you're always, you're always chasing somebody worth a darn. You know, and I always consider it like uh, fishing with a really wide net. Like you're going to catch a lot of junk, but in that net, you might get one thing that you want. That's kind of where hiring is. It's like 10 junk employees. You get one good one. So hiring's big. Now, if you are at the brink of your financial, uh, if you're out of money, hiring's hard because you still got to pay those people to go through training and everything to get ready for everything that's about to come. But only you know that. If you can uh, get any type of assistance, if you haven't or any of that, this is what that's used for, is getting those employees back online. It's helping somebody with their stuff because they're working again. But the big thing is, is that you're prepping for this big boom that's coming. And it is coming, I'm telling you. Every trend that we've seen has been correct. From the beginning side of where states started to fail and the side now where states are going back online. It's very, very interesting to see it on a nationwide and to actually see numbers as compared to what the news tells you, I guess, not to get onto that, but it's really interesting because there's some people who have been online now for weeks, you know, you may be in phase two, but your business has been going crazy. We're in phase two here in North Carolina, like I was saying, and uh, phase three is going to happen anytime, which is basically opening everything back up 100%. It's coming. When that happens, people are not waiting for that to happen. They're calling you before that. They're like, all right, things are going back. Oh, phase one, now I'm comfortable because I know phase two and three are coming. That's when you see that big boom. So if you're not in a phase yet, understand that once you get to phase one, the boom will happen. And I want to touch on one other thing. If you're a route guy and you got hit super, super hard, maybe as much as you don't want to jump on the bandwagon, Maybe now you diversify and you start uh, maybe advertising or taking on houses just to kind of get kind of not all your eggs in one basket. Route is easy. Route is easy. You build up a great route. You have a great company. That's There's no doubt about that. But maybe you diversify. Maybe you have one day a week. Every Monday, every Friday, whatever, you do houses. Now you're diversifying, so even if something changes with one side, it doesn't change with the other side possibly, and now you're still in the income. Really, again, easy for somebody to say. I know somebody also who uh, completely rebranded or is rebranding his company from window cleaning that does pressure washing to a pressure washing company that does window cleaning. That's interesting. Super interesting. But the need is higher on the pressure washing side and the want is higher on the window cleaning side. That was his kind of idea. It's pretty interesting. When you reinvent yourself to tailor a market or to maximize your um, efficiencies, it's, it's interesting. 
Here's the thing. When you started, you're doing a lot of stuff now that you did when you started. You didn't know anything when you started. But yet, it's the way you've always done it, so you're still doing it. Rebranding is really getting you out of your comfort zone. You know, like if you're a route guy and you're taking on houses, that's not what you want to do. It's not what you've ever wanted to do. But maybe, maybe now it makes sense. So something to think about. Something to think about. And I'm still a nobody, so if you don't think about it, that's cool too. But that's kind of the big one. Higher now. Higher now. But the big in, the biggest side of this is buckle up. Buckle up because I'm telling you it comes in super fast and it's instant. You're instantly going to be busier than you've ever been before because all those people in spring that missed out on their spring are waiting now are all comfortable and they have money. It is a combination for the biggest spring you've ever had. Now, if you're watching or listening, go to YouTube, search this episode, comment down below and tell me if it is the biggest spring you've ever had. Pause the video if you're watching right now. Tell me if your numbers are up or you're still down. I'd love to know that kind of stuff. I'm hoping everybody's up and I know there's some of you are still down, but you have to keep your heads up. That's the big thing with all this is that your mental state and the happiness you have for this company is what keeps you afloat or doesn't. I know people who have just thrown the towel in and you know what, it's done. I'm done. I'm not, I'm, I can't do it anymore. And there's others that are strong. They're stronger. They have the mental capacity to weather what goes on. This is why they joke that you guys make the big bucks as business owners. You may not have to answer to anybody, but you have to answer to yourself. And that's the hardest thing is keeping your brain in a positive light is the hardest thing. It's so easy to fall down that kind of despair tube and go, this is garbage. all because nothing like this has ever happened. It gets you out and it just, it's, it would be like if we're standing there and all of a sudden dragons appear in the sky. Your mind would melt, right? Because you've never seen it. You don't know what's going on. Somebody goes, oh, no, it's fine. They're just passing through. You only see them for a day. No, I just still don't understand. It's the same concept. The worst analogy ever. <laughs> but same concept. This whole thing's never happened. So we don't know, okay, well, really is it going I can tell you, yes, it's, it's, it's done. It's, it's done and we're on the other side. Well on the other side. There's a lot of places who, like I said, are just going ridiculously crazy. And it's going to happen to you too. But you got to keep up positive. you got to stay on that you know, door that's floating in the middle of the ocean until things start picking up. And that's the hardest part. The pro to that is if you can make it through, not only are you going to have an awesome business on the outside of this, it's going to be so strong. Learning from lessons like this makes you the strongest you've ever been. I'm telling you. Some of the lessons that I learned from screwing myself over are the strongest ones that I remember now. I keep in my brain to this day because I know that it messed me up once. I don't want to let it do it again. And if any of that's coming to you, any of that's happening to you, use it as a learning, a learning uh, lesson. Do it. Anyway, there you go. Keep your heads up. Um, if you are uh, still watching, you've never bought in supplies for me, now's your chance to save my number. It's 862-312-2026. Um, 862-312-2026. Text me, call me, whatever. I want to be your rep for not only questions um, about buying products, which obviously is how I make my cheddar, um, but also if you have pricing questions or chemical questions or anything, let me know. I got 15 years experience, which isn't as much as some of you I know, but maybe I can help you with something. And that's what we're here for. Really window cleaning resource. We want to be a resource. So I'll get off my high horse now, but there you go. That's my number. Save it. Jersey is the name. Buy your supplies through me because that would be awesome. I get most people actually shop you know, at night or on their own time or over like a couple of weeks, they're just throwing stuff in the cart. And then one day they're just like, hey, Jersey, everything's in there. Put it in. Yes. I love those because you know what? It's easy. And it, again, it's like people say, well, why don't you get a Patreon? That, I don't need a Patreon for any of this stuff because there's so many of you out there that buy from me. So anyway, there you go. S keep your head up. Uh, stay in the game. Save me as your uh, person. If you haven't heard yet the code this week is going to be buckle up if you use that code in text or on the phone 
you'll save you 5% plus free shipping. So buckle up is the code this week. Let me know that. And until next week, keep your head up. And most importantly, be epic.